Hi, and Happy New Year, everybody. I'm Bill McGee, and I'm thrilled to be back at Rough and Ready and to uh, read a short excerpt from my novel, Half the Child. I'm also thrilled that it just uh, debuted as an audiobook about two weeks ago. So it's available in print and Kindle and audio, and there's more at the website, halfthechild.com. So this is a novel that I look at as a, a love story, but between a, a father and a young son, sort of a tribute to fatherhood. And uh, it's also uh, a love story about the borough of Queens, where nearly the entire novel is, thought, is set. Uh, the protagonist and narrator is uh, Michael Mullen, who's a uh, air traffic controller at LaGuardia Airport. And he keeps having, throughout this book, a series of comings and goings with his son during a custody uh, battle. And eventually it culminates in his very young son being abducted overseas by Michael's ex-wife. And so uh, the short section that I wanted to read uh, most definitely takes place in Queens on the Grand Central Parkway. And it details another one of these uh, hellos and goodbyes that Michael and Ben are constantly going through. It's my first full day alone with Ben since he returned from Evansville. We're on the widest part of the Grand Central Parkway, heading east with the fairgrounds on our left as we cruise toward the Van Wick and a trip to the Coney Island Aquarium. Ben's in his perch, strapped into his car seat in the center of the wagon, riding high where I can see his face drooping onto his left shoulder. He's out for a nap, with dog in his lap. I'm not sure how to interpret why Ben's been acting so strange the last few days. That hesitance at the end of the jet bridge last week lingered, albeit sporadically. He has never shied away from hugging me, kissing me, holding my hand. But ever since she walked him off that plane, it's as if Ben knows something about me that I don't. He'll forget it for hours at a stretch, and then revert as if recalling absent instruction. I pop in one of my favorites, Warren Zevon, and sing along, ignoring the bright orange check engine light on the dashboard. Lovey needs new tires, a new battery, new suspension but the money I don't have to spend on those things has already been promised elsewhere. Send lawyers, guns, and money. We're in the left lane and inching up towards 70 miles per hour. Then, before any sane person can even fathom why, the silver Mini Cooper in front of me slams full on the brakes. My brain instantly calculates this dipshit only just grasped he's four lanes away from the Harry Von Osdale Jr. Avenue exit and therefore the lives of multiple strangers, men, women, children, pets, dogs, should be endangered, since that's clearly a better option than doubling back on Queens Boulevard and exit later. I can see the undercarriage of that crappy little car as the brake lights tilt upward from the sudden deacceleration. My brain simultaneously calculates neither the laws of physics nor the God I prayed to at St. Rita's school when I still believed in his existence will be enough to prevent me from rear-ending this oh-so-selfish prick in my 4,300-pound station wagon. But I recall the words of Bob Hoover, the greatest pilot who ever lived, fly as far into the crash as possible. I brake and steer and brake and steer, and the wagon jerks, and then it squeals, it slides, and it shimmies, and now we're just past the Cooper's left rear quarter panel as we kick up last winter's rock salt and plow through the grassy median, past the prick, and fishtail back into the fast lane. All this in the time it takes to grimace. In the patch of rearview mirror above Ben's head, I instantly see that, miraculously, for the first time since Robert Moses built the damn parkway, no one is tailgating in the left lane. It all happens so fast I don't even get a look at the selfish one piloting the Cooper. The wagon rights itself as though it's on tracks, and we continue. But the adrenaline has always, has burst onto the scene and now wants to stay. I feel my pulsing vessels and pound the steering wheel with the meat of my palm. Cocksucker! I hiss in fury at what a careless, faceless stranger was prepared to take. And then I hear it. Cocksucker, Ben chimes in. The rear view shows he's more than stirring. stirring. He's positively alert. I make my living finding the right words to express myself on a moment's notice during flash flashes of terror and distress. But for once, I'm vocally challenged, and I falter. The lecture about saying bad things just won't program itself. Instead, I say what I truly feel. I love you, buddy. 
For the first time since his return, his smile is genuine. I love you, Daddy. Ben is back. So, uh, thank you. Uh, again, this is uh, Half the Child. There's more information at the website, halfthechild.com. And I look forward to seeing everybody from Rough and Ready, and hopefully in the future uh, we can do it in person. Thanks very much.